easy with this microphone here. I'm going to try not to trip you. Sorry, ladies. I was going to bring those in. All right. Great questions. Let's see here. I'm going to start off with Rebecca. <laughs> Oh, you first, Rebecca. Um, give me pre-performance rituals. Oh, golly gee. Um, <laughs> sleeping in is usually a big part of it, usually because we've been rehearsing uh, so much, especially this week, uh, which was a very fantastically intense process. So sleeping in is a big part of it. Um, a little bit of working out, a lot of sort of vocalizing throughout the day so I don't tax myself too much. I do have to say I rock out to the Bee Gees a little bit just to get me. <laughs> so, that's the key right there. Oh, the Bee Gees. Just inside your head, or if I walked into your dressing room, would I be able to hear it? Oh, it's on my iPod. Yeah, yeah, on my iPod. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, why opera? Why not American Idol? <laughs> This is the real story. In 2004, I was auditioning for the uh, Opera Center, uh, the uh, Young Artist Program called the Ryan Opera Center in the Lyric Opera of Chicago. And I told myself, okay, this is, if I, I'm gonna audition, if I don't get into the program, it was my last year, I was 29, the cutoff was 29, I will drive from California to Las Vegas to audition for American Idol. <laughs> so basically, um, one of the real things is because of age limit, but that was, I, I made a pact with myself. Since I got into the program, I said, nope, no more American Idol. I still watch it though, <laughs> religiously. <laughs> All right, Alex Tall, uh, would you care to share a favorite wolf trap memory with us? What happened here on this stage or any place else public that you can talk about? <laughs> this is a really hard question to be put on the spot for. It does me. All right, for, first of all, I, would, I just want to throw out that of all the people on the stage, I am the furthest removed from my time in wolf trap. Uh, but the, I, I would say that sort of that whole Sweeney Todd process, that was like... Singing the part of Anthony and Sweeney Todd is kind of like the only time I've ever gotten to be the tenor. Which, you know, I mean, he's not a t he doesn't sing like a tenor in operatic standards, but he's got that tune, Joanna, and, you know, it sort of is a bring down the house kind of rocking out tune, and boy, that just never happens, and that hasn't happened since. So. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to go over here to my right. Yeah, Rebecca. Yeah, Rebecca. Pianist, partner in crime, David Shimoni. The question is, how long did, uh, David, how long did you and I work together before the singers arrived? Uh, like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> and was that enough? <laughs> So, <laughs> I I've played these two scores before, and um, so actually, this, it's really nice to get to play them again because I think I was sweating bullets the first time I, I played them. Um, John's piece, what you just heard, is particularly tricky to count. Um, so this has been this has been great to get to do it again, and it's been fabulous to do it with with Kim and with this cast. It's kind of like chamber music. These. Two pieces. And David was our is our institutional memory because he had done these pieces before, and we were all coming to them new. We kept asking him if we were allowed to do something. So any liberties we've taken, they're all his fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, several questions about opera in English. Nick, I'll come over here to you. Um, do you have a at this point a favorite language you like to sing in? I mean, English, French, German, Italian, Russian, you name it. Yes. Well, I. Um... I love to sing in French. I happen to be part French. My mother is French, so I speak French, and I love to s sing in that language, as well as, um, I mean, Italian is wonderful as well. English has the, is, is wonderful because you understand the words, but if you mess up the words, then people really know. <laughs> so that's always the problem with English. <laughs> Especially if you give them the libretto. <laughs> it's a scary thing, you know. You can make up gibberish in lots of other languages and get away with it. Um, uh, and another uh, related question: How do you? I'm going to faith here. 
How do you handle the demands of good vocal production with the demands of the superb diction that someone out there felt that you were hearing tonight? Several of you, actually. How, they, how do you, you know, can, can they both coexist? Well, thank you to whoever thought that the diction was really good. <laughs> That's always a big challenge, actually, trying to weigh, you know, when you really need to hear the words um, and when I can sort of fudge them a little bit and maybe have it sound kind of like the word, but really sound pretty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's always a challenge. Um, I don't know, I think it's, uh, I love singing in English actually. It's always been a language that I really enjoy and I think the only time that it's tricky is if there's like a really tricky word on a high note with a really like vowel that I don't like to sing up there and then I sort of have to modify it a little bit but I don't know. I tend to not have too much of a problem? Is that terrible? <laughs> I really like it, so it's not that big of a deal for me. And you know, I, I think it's about, there, there's a clinical side to that, but it's also about intention. I think, and these folks really, you know, they're, they're in this story, they're telling the story, they are being these people. And you know, it goes beyond, you know, hard Ds and glottal As and things like that. I think it makes a big difference. If you haven't guessed yet, the gentleman all the way to your right is responsible for all these words. Um, some of you met him at the pre-show talk. This is Mark Campbell, our librettist, and he agreed to join us up here. question about what it feels like to sit in the audience uh, and watch something that you built from the ground up go by you and put it in other people's hands and know that they might not exactly... Uh, no, 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 it has nothing to do with accuracy. I mean, no, 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 I mean, when you, when, you, when you create something, you know how it goes. Now, they're going to put their own spin on it. How does that feel, sitting in the audience? It's terrifying yeah. um, first, and, but it's also really exciting. It, is this on? I don't know. Um, and, and you guys, you were amazing tonight. I was, because I, I was really scared. Um, <laughs> these were premiered by New York Festival of Song two years ago, and so I have very fond memories of that. And I, you know, and and it was a great experience, but it was. Um, <laughs> Maybe you should turn off the mic. Um, <laughs> it was a greater experience for me tonight because when you see something the first time, you're like, oh, wow, it's good, it's fun. And then two years go by and you write a lot of stuff in between. You don't even remember what you wrote two years ago, which I do. Um, and so I came to this very fresh, and, it, and I said, it's good. This is a good story. <laughs> and, um, and, and, they, and, and the direction was terrific. And the projections and... Everything was really beautiful. I was. Um, we didn't get to do this when we did it at Wild Recital Hall, um, when when Leon Major directed it, because we didn't have the resources, we didn't have the time, and it's a smaller space. And so, what I really most want from this is an endorsement to get this produced in a full production. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> These folks are an extension of me, so you know you have to deal with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was it was great to see it semi-staged, and now I want to see it fully staged. Okay. Okay, we have to get going with the second opera, but very quickly down the line, just uh, tell us uh, one in, one thing you've done, interesting place you've been, role you've sung since you've been here at Wolf Child. What's uh, one thing you might have done since then? Well, I was fortunate enough to uh, do my uh, uh, Metropolitan Opera debut last season, fall, in uh, Rose and Cavalier, and in uh, Tales of Hoffman, which actually just aired last. Uh, Wednesday. So that's what the last thing I did before I came. Okay. The role of La Roche in Strauss's Capriccio. Uh, probably uh, Silvio at City Opera in Pagliacci. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> you weren't here before, so you can't answer the question. Um, I was involved in Woody Allen's first opera production, Johnny Skiki at LA Opera. That was some crazy times. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make my overseas debut. I got to do a really interesting role in uh, an opera by Kaya Sariaho called La Mour de Loin with English National Opera, and it was really cool. Okay. And Mark, slightly different for you. What's coming up? What's coming up? Oh, I knew it, Triple. I, I knew it. Do that. I almost got finished. You falling on the stage, that's what's coming up. <laughs> what's coming up for you? Um, well, we've got the inspector. Yeah. Um, 
The Inspector, Mark Campbell, John Musto, slated to premiere here next April. Yes, and uh, we've got a workshop of that in May, and then I'm doing a piece for Virginia Opera, Virginia Festival of the Arts, and um, University of Richmond, a piece about the Civil War with Ricky and Gordon, and then I'm doing an opera for um, Minnesota Opera based on the movie Joya Noel uh, with the composer Kevin Putz, and I'm doing a musical at the Signature, and these are all kind of happening at the same time, so um, I need a lot of drugs and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that is the perfect segue to Lucrezia, so let's do it. Thank you very much.